Hello and welcome to All My Art and Soul with Michelle Holden. Today we're going to be wor- I'm going to be working on a blue abstract of Earth and Sky number nine. As you can see here, I've selected, which I usually do, um, a bunch of blue, mauve. Um, this is going to be a cool abstract um, and this wonderful um, magazine landscape, which I really like. But in the end, I don't end up using it. And you'll see why, and I'll, and I'll explain. Um, here are some collage papers that I've created with uh, with this tool. And uh, that's how I'm demonstrating on my jelly plate. And uh, in the next few videos or so, I'll be demonstrating that as well. There's just so much to learn. Um, and um, I'll be taping up the edges as usual. Um, I like to use these mediums, transparent, and of course the gold fluid white I think it's a titanium white. And uh, on the side, you can't see, but I'm just gathering, uh, getting organized, and making sure everything is within arm's reach. And this, uh, this print is on noose print, uh, which has a slightly gray tone, um, but it's so absorbent and it glues down easily, but I think it would even look better uh, and look different on a bright white, uh, just printer paper. Uh, you can print on anything. Uh, pages uh, from old texts, which I've used and uh, probably should use more. I'll have to dig those out. Um, keeping your supplies, your, your collage supplies, organized so you can find them right away is always challenging and everybody has a different system. Some by color, some by text, not. Um, I'm usually organizing it by color these days and it's easy to find. I just keep all the blue things in a Ziploc and then keep them in a bin and a transparent bin so I can see what's in there. So as I am taping this up and getting it ready, I am also selecting some cool ink tense pencils. Um, I probably, uh, and I'm thinking of just horizontal areas this time. Um, I know that there's more that we can do with these, but it's all how you're feeling. It's all about how this piece feels. And of course, I'm taking bits of water and streaking it, and then it becomes way more intense in color. And this time, what I'm using is that um, matte medium. Yeah, there it is right there. Um, I don't know if it's working or not working. It definitely would need, uh, it definitely needed longer drawing time. But uh, I'm just, as I said before, trying different things. Uh, the two blues that you see in the on my glass palette, that's uh, the one on the left is Cellulene. The one on the right, I believe, the one I'm using now is, uh, I think it's a cobalt blue. And I'm just moving it around. Sometimes, um, uh, depending on how you're using the brush strokes, I like them, but nope, I didn't change my mind. And I just like that how the brayer just rolls over things, smooths them out, and then I just need it a little bit more, as you can see. Now, sometimes the paint likes to get underneath that tape, uh, which isn't a big deal, uh, and it doesn't go very far in. You just have to make sure that your edges are sealed. Now, this is another colleg uh, collage piece that I've made with my jelly plate, just experimenting with different mauves, violets. Uh, the one thing that's annoying though, when your jelly plate is only a certain size and your paper is larger, you get that edge that you need to trim. So I think I might hunt down a, or purchase a larger jelly plate in the future. Right now I think I have just a five by seven I think I might get, uh, I think they come nine by, or eight by 10, nine by 12. 
I'll have to take a look. And um, why I'm moving it around, it, it's the subtlety in color. And that's what triggers, I believe, in, in, our, in our senses, uh, why a piece looks better in an area versus the other. And as you can see, I've decided to, so it doesn't get too thick, to score the edges as I go. And wonderful, what do we call this? Tissue paper, colored tissue paper is amazing in that when you glue it down, it just applies this really thin, translucent layer over anything and you can still see things underneath. Sometimes I tear it, sometimes I cut it, depending. There's that piece of blue again. <clears throat> so I'm just trimming up the edges, deciding. Now, how big these stripe areas, so I changed my mind again. Why? Because it was too similar to the top piece and too similar in value. So I went and uh, that's why I've opted for the darker, which was made just by using those colleg those uh, rubber tools that I showed earlier in, at the beginning of the video and just smearing paint very thinly on, um, I do believe that's a drawing paper. And you can make sheets and sheets. You can cut the sheets in half because they're really big. And I'm, and I'm learning that for collage. Um, a lot of the times you only need, or I'm only using small pieces, unless you're working very large. And I'm just trying to square off the, uh, the edges here. So I like an angle, I like the imperfection, but I don't want it to be that imperfect. So now this piece has more weight on the bottom, which I'm liking. Now there's a little gap uh, in between and overlaying different directions, uh, collage piece on top. So there I am playing with that uh, landscape. I've chosen that landscape mostly because of its color. Hmm. I think I'm, I'm leaning more towards purples and things. So I think I'm gonna do a purple one next, the next video for sure. So uh, the nice pale blue, the torn edges, they're so natural um, and I'm just changing up that piece, putting that in the bottom. And I will uh, run my fingernail over the edge, which then creates a guideline and then you can score it much more accurately. Yes. And you have to make sure your X-Acto knife is sharp enough. That also helps a lot. <laughs> there are so many blues. Um, you can go very light, very pale. But uh, I, as I said, I think in the next video, uh, I'm going to experiment with some dynamic colors. You always want to change it up. You always want to be challenging yourself and exploring with different, uh, different values, different colors, textures, mark making, line, patterns of line. And uh, I really uh, like this opportunity when I'm um, doing the commentary as I am now, going over what I've created. And I get to... Uh, look at it as in a step away and see oh okay well maybe i maybe i should have done this or chosen that so here i am um wrestling with should i use this should i not use it well i'm really liking the mauve in the bottom part of that picture and the texture it's making so i don't even know if i choose to use it or not Yes, I move it around and I put it to the side. And then I grab my uh, crayon there, my china marker, 
to make these marks, which in the end I end up covering anyway, just some, you think you like something and it doesn't work. And just using the glue stick is so fast and easy for applying paper on paper. And then later on, you can decide to um, finish it with a gloss or just leave it as is. Yes, so that has been... And I've placed the three dots. As you can see, I move it around and I think I flip it, yeah, that's it. Just because the mauve and the gray background of the three dots really matches and it doesn't work. And I end up putting it centrally. Oh, I thought I'd try to tear this and then, oh, Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. And you just keep moving on. And there's my little my little house shape, that pentagon that I use a lot in my work. It's uh, upside down in the upper left-hand corner. I end up using that. <laughs> it's amazing I found it, because it's so tiny. Mm -hmm. And the... The advantage of using collage papers or pieces is that you can just, you don't have to commit to anything. You can just move them around and see, okay, what looks good, what doesn't look good, what feels right. So as you can see, that is the uh, Payne's Gray, one of my favorite darks because, as I said before, it's so transparent. I found this tissue paper easy to apply. It didn't get all wrinkly. Um, and I'm using the a heavy gloss g uh, gel with a, a really nice brush that I like. Long enough handle so it reaches down in. It's also a good way to seal um, Say if you're using oil pastel on top of acrylic, you can just brush uh, some high gloss gel, even matte, even the matte medium to seal it. Any medium can seal that. So again, scoring the edges so it has a nice clean edge when we remove the tape. And so, um, if you are liking this content and enjoying my videos, please remember to um, hit that like button and uh, subscribe if you have not already. And I will be creating more content like this. Um, and even um, I will expand into uh, on birch panels, cradle panels. Um, different color combinations. Oh, I have so many exciting videos uh, planned for the future. <laughs> so I'll explain why in the end I glue it on the top, the very top, and then looking back at it as I leave, um, I just didn't like the feeling um, I believe because it was just too literal, this landscape up in the sky. It's just, oh, it's not the feeling I wanted. So you'll see. So stick around to the end of the video to see how I change it and make really big improvements, I think. So that's that teal uh, from a tube. And I find... Um, since these are smaller pieces, you don't need to use so much paint. So this is where I stick with the golden, uh, my paints from the tube. And there I go applying my Payne's Gray. I think even a black would have been good too. Any dark. Now I'm careful not to make it the same size as the lower dark. You want difference. You always want something different. And there I go again, feeling that. <laughs> I will end up using it 
in a different piece. Oh, so I just have a little section. So I'm, yep, I'm going to put it down there. And sometimes you don't even need glue if the paint's still wet, you just stick that down. Oh, I didn't commit to the three dots yet. But I know I end up doing that. Yeah, here we go. And this is watercolor paper. It's very thick, but it provides a really nice three-dimensional feeling when you have thick pieces of cardboard sort of sticking out in elevation. It, it adds a texture, which I really like. Yes, and then now that I've added that, I needed, I just needed to move that other piece up. So there's the, uh, the white china marker. I know that you can get other colors, but I've only come across white and black so far. I, I believe red. Red would be great, and a really nice red and orange. Those are other colors that I plan to explore. Um, summer's coming, so we're going to really explore with the colors. And you can see my um, just selection of just student pastels. Uh, they were from an art store. Uh, I forget now, uh, but they're nice and soft. And um, in the end, once you want everything sealed, you can just put either a gloss medium on top of that, a to on top each of each stroke and seal it, or a gloss, matte or a gloss will work. So as you can see, I'm just trimming that down. It was too wide and I do end up putting it up there, but I just, want the sky to emulate more what's in that little picture. More of the oranges and pinks and of course the diagonal streaking lines of color. Now of course when you apply this it it does dry clear in the end so you don't have to worry about that and it's quite a thick layer I put on there so I do end up rubbing it off a bit and you can see I'm sealing the other pastel marks beside it yeah, I'm just using a lot of uh, high gloss medium today oh that's good <laughs> I must have a lot on hand <laughs> so difficult to get art supplies now that all the all the stores are shut down I'll have to uh, do an Amazon shop. Okay, so I'm just wiping a little bit of that off and I'm doing some thinking. Good old Q-tip for circles, um, which is great. I also like to use the acrylic pens, paint pens. Uh, there's so many brands now. I just have a Sharpie. Um, I would love to order some Posca pens and the Woodies. Uh, I understand that they're soft and they really do some really nice mark making on top of paint. So we will try those in the future as well. So as you can see, I'm not liking those horizontal lines there. So I am going to put, the, notice how it keeps the eye there. And then once I add that piece of gray, which is similar to the, the violet above, it just calms it right down. And you wanna make sure uh, that the viewer's eye can move all around the piece. Yeah, last minute, just putting that little piece of tissue paper. You don't really see it. And anyway, I end up covering it, as you will see if you stick to the end of the video. <clears throat> and we're moving along um, using the china marker. But as you see, I stopped quickly because paint was still a little wet but you can still remove and as you see if it tears you just go a different direction sometimes it'll lift the paper and then I just add a little blue paint to make that correction there oh 
tearing again. That means I didn't score it properly, as you can see. So I'm going to lift it the other direction and put down some glue and then seal up that edge, just like that. Okay, and so far, uh, we think this is finished, but it is not, because as I turn and walk away, I'm just not happy with the image at the very top. It makes the eye stay there um, and stop. There's, there's no flow. So what I'm thinking of is adding a piece of abstract collage, pa collage paper And I think it'll make, here I go. So that piece that I tore, oh, so much better. And of course, that piece, which I'm just squaring up. And I just tried to tear, oh, I did. It came off easily. It doesn't matter. I would have just glued it right over the top and that would just add to the history of the piece. Anything that's already on there, I've learned, just leave it. It is only going to add to the interest of the texture or pattern. I use the number eight a lot in its relation to uh, the infinity sign. Um, if you just do a little research, what eight symbolizes, it's uh, really cool. I like to have any symbols or images connect with each other in some way. So I'm liking this so much better. So it's a little wide, it's a little tall, so I'm just trimming it down so it fits. And there's some edges of the image underneath showing and I just think that's just fine. Okay, much better. It's just missing a lighter value. It's missing one more element. What could that be? As you can see, yes, so I'm flowing the blue pastel through that. That does improve it a little bit more. But the object, the stenciling object on the left, I notice it and I go, oh, exactly. And using a little bit of white, so right now I'm just scraping that messy dot, but I like it. Oh, and there we go. So I'm just using a natural sponge, this one sponge I really like, because, and it, you just have it damp. You don't want it oversaturated with water. And there we go. I just need a little bit more, so I'm matching up the squares because I want them that way. And this composition is called a cruciform, a cross composition. Uh, once you start looking at work, you will see. And thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.